I mean, we've got to talk about the Beckham. We've yeah. got to talk about Beckham. Yeah. I had yeah, lots of posters of him yeah. on my wall growing it's up. So good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that World Cup when he had a shaved head. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sherlock's Team Podcast with me, Heather Steele. Today I'm joined by Sherry Andrew, Harriet Russell and Lou Huff in her first official team podcast since you got back from maternity leave. Hi. How's it going? It's so nice to be back. I was actually saying to you guys earlier that I've really missed doing the podcast, which is not something I thought I would say because when I first started doing them, they used to make me so nervous. But um, yeah, I love it. So I'm really looking forward to just chatting with you guys. Oh, same. I know when I saw that you were doing it, I was like, yes. <laughs> Finally. I was just on this last podcast and it literally feels as though it was mm. like three weeks ago. I know. It has gone so quickly. I can remember everything we talked about. <laughs> we talked but about I can't. my policeman. I think oh, I was. I do oh remember God, that one. Wow. Yeah. I was um, shoved in the corner. You were. You had yeah, that I was, hiding. I was so uncomfortable, <laughs> you were so uncomfortable I think, yeah. at that point at that stage yeah. I still look back at pictures of my bump and I'm like that is just mad yeah <laughs> just the female form is just so incredible yeah see a baby in there so yeah. very happy to be back with you guys yeah. so you've been back a couple of weeks now yes. haven't you yeah with us. how's it all gone yeah it's good it is busy as ever um I don't know why I thought it was a really good idea to come back in September yeah. um I think I thought it was like you know it's the start of a school year I'm gonna get stuck yeah. in and yeah it's really it's really really nice to be back and and be using my brain again in a slightly different way. But it's tiring. I, I was at, um, and my daughter was up at 5.30 this morning. She's been poorly for the last two weeks. And my husband has now, I think, got a man flu. Um, so, oh, yes. yeah, it's been pretty full on for the last few weeks. Well, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's genuinely great having you Thank back. Thank you. I mean, we haven't done a proper team podcast in ages, have we? Because I think we've done like some food specials and we did, you did the Russell and Bromley one. So yeah, it's nice to have us all back around. Uh, Sherry, what have you been up to? Back on the sofa. Um, I've just been, you know what? I've had a very relaxed start to autumn. Just, just been enjoying being at home, really. Um, I'm so ready for the cold weather. That is like yep. my thing, my jam. It's three degrees next Monday. Oh my goodness. I know. A high of three degrees. No, a low. No. But I okay. feel it's Charlotte and I had a discussion. Yeah. I look at low, she looks at high when you read That's the temperature. Really interesting. Yeah. I, look at high. I always look at high. Yeah, yeah I do, because I don't like to be over hot. Well, okay. I, know I, I always assume the low is going to be at like two o'clock in the yeah, morning when true. hopefully I'm in bed. Fair. Fair. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm so hopeful for cold weather that. That's what I was focusing on. I mean, on. it is supposed to be like yeah. 24 degrees today, which is so yeah. ridiculous. Oh, anxiety inducing. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm ready for the cold weather. Um, so I've been doing a lot of cooking recently, actually. Ooh, I feel like I'm really wow. leaning into like just enjoying being at home on a weekend, yeah. and, like cooking something that I would never cook in the week. Um, and we just got one of the Sage pizza ovens. Oh, have which you? has been a very exciting Amazing. news in the household. Mm. It is like so good I can't is that an outdoor it. or indoor one so it's an indoor one yeah so I've it's fully those. electric yeah but it replicates like a stone baked pizza on your worktop but it does get very very hot I think it's like 400 degrees I was, wow. yeah because I always wonder mm. I don't think I've got the space in my kitchen for one but like even if I did I could just imagine it being quite furnace like it is. It's very, very hot to the point where we used it yesterday for the first time. And I was very cautious. I was like, oh, I don't want to set, set it on fire. And um, so the first pizza that we made actually came out really well. Mm. But there's a knack to getting it on the, the pizza. Um, it's called like the paddle. Yeah. You shove it in. That is really hard. Mm. You see them in the restaurants. They yeah. They look so easy. Mm. I mean, the first time we did it, everything just slid <laughs> off like the mozzarella. Oh, no. Mushrooms. Oh, no. Next minute it's on fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Um, but once you've got the knack of it, it's um, quite easy to use. Pizza's at yours then. Pizza yeah. more, yeah. Everyone I mean, round to Sherry's. <laughs> pizza party. I mean, it's quite a lot of effort. Sherry's. Like <laughs> making the dough, that's, you know, labour intensive. Once that's done, you've got your toppings to go. Mm. It's really fun. Yeah, when amazing. you get to pick your toppings, do you get overexcited? Because I feel like not, there's nothing worse than a soggy pizza. Yeah, but and that's I, always yeah. when, it, when it's overloaded with too many things. That's so true. Point. But I do love a classic margarita. Yeah. yeah. No, I do too. Mm, yeah. Everyone always thinks that's so boring. But I've come back round to them yeah. though. I think when I was younger, I'd be like, boring. But now I'm like, actually, that's... <laughs> it's that's yeah, it's actually the simple things that are done really well. <laughs> We're getting old, guys. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the simple things in life. Yes. Um, Have you so, been yeah. trying any new cookbooks? Or, you know, when you're saying about trying the new recipes, Ooh, or is there yes. anything recently that's been... So I made a big Caribbean feast on Saturday night, Fun. inspired by Heather and I went to Bricks and Market. I was talking about that yesterday, to somebody just like waxing about it. It was just so good. So we went to film a TikTok there on Tuesday and we were trying lots of the black owned food vendors. 
And we went to probably my favourite place in the whole village called Fish Wings and Tings. Oh my God, it was Just so like good. a legendary Caribbean restaurant that's been there for like over 20 years. But the food there is so great. It's like typical Caribbean, rice and peas, jerk chicken, all that kind of stuff. And the most amazing- Salt cod like, fritters. Yes. Oh, really good. Planting, everything that you want. For Why like do we always record food. these podcasts at like 12.30? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> True. Um, so I kind of replicated that on Saturday oh, night. Nice. So I did a jerk chicken, which- Came out very well. I was very pleased. However, I got some scotch bonnet on my hand. Oh no, oh, no. guys! It was burning for about six oh, hours. No. To the point where I was like, "How do I? How do I stop this?" But <laughs> no. it was what just you burning try? your hand. Yeah, it was really strange. So the recipe called for ten, and I was like, "I'm going to put it in." It's spicy, but me and my family can all take spice. Yeah, yeah ten. It's intense. I know, and I wore gloves. I was very. I was going to say gloves. Mm-hmm. I've heard are like the tip. Mm. The tip, because you don't want to get that on your. Anywhere on your body, Anywhere. it's just, yeah, disaster. Um, so put it all into the blender. It came together really well. Put it in the fridge to marinade. And then I must have got it on my hand during the washing up or something. And I felt this like Ooh. lingering ting- tingle. And I was like, this doesn't feel good. Um, and I was WhatsApping my boyfriend. I was like, Lam, please help me. <laughs> my hand is on fire. What do I do? And he was on Reddit trying to get like some, yeah. um, you know, some ways to calm it down. So I was like, rubbing my hands yogurt. of oil in yogurt, I I aloe vera, everything. And I just had to just like put it in ice for like about oh, an hour. Oh, wow. That is, is it right now? It's fine now, but it did take oh, about six hours to like cool down. If that was your hand, how were your tongues then? It having was, well, ten? that's interesting because it was wasn't it wasn't too spicy. Um, mm. So it was like a good level, yeah, a little bit spicy, but yeah. not like you wouldn't know there was like was ten squash bad. bonnets. Oh. I think the cooking kind of like yeah, neutral some of it. Yeah, yeah. well, like, maybe you had like yeah. a teeny tiny like cut on your hand yeah, or something because oh, that does God. sound yeah. When um, me and my husband started dating, we I don't know why we did this. We went to a garden centre mm-hmm. as like a little trip out. <laughs> and um, there was some like, peppers growing and he was like, oh, like, amazing. These look so tasty. He was like really trying to impress me with being like so casual, just like <laughs> pulling this pepper off and giving oh, it a God. bite. And then literally... <laughs> in the garden centre. In, in, in the garden centre. And then his Is mouth there anything was like... Is than yeah. watching a guy pick a pepper? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns out it was a really hot chilli. <laughs> and he then like could not speak. His mouth was on oh, fire. Oh my God, that's too funny. And made that mistake. So you didn't learn. have like a water or anything no, with you. He was just trying to be cool as well and was like, oh, it's, it's like, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst feeling. You're like, yeah. this is hell. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it all came out well in the end. So, yes, but that was me. It's lots of cooking and oh, hunkering down, really. Nice. How about you, Harriet? I feel like I'm the opposite. I feel like I literally didn't stop in September. I think it started because we went away at the mm-hmm. beginning of the month, which is very typical for us. We don't tend to go away in the middle of school holidays and all of that stuff. So I was in France where Lou went like yes. two weeks before oh, me. Yeah, of course. Um, although you were moving around a bit yeah. more, whereas we were pretty much stationary in this village called Lumaram, which is in the middle of the Lou Brom. Which is like the most beautiful village mm. ever. Yeah, it's just, I mean, you look at it and you think there are people out here, I swear, with like little wipes and stuff in the morning, like making it look so pristine. <laughs> oh, it looks like a nice. Disney village. You're just like, this isn't real. Like Gaston's going to come yeah. around <laughs> like any minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was beautiful. Um, so, so yeah, I was away for sort of the first week and a bit. And then, um, as Lou said, it's been very, very busy here. Then I've just had quite a few visitors and stuff at the weekend so my cousins came over from Canada I haven't oh, seen nice. them since before the pandemic for obvious reasons so that was really nice her son the last time I saw him was 2016 and he was like a newborn and oh, now wow. he's seven. Oh my oh, god wow. I know I know that's crazy and her daughter who's five wasn't even born oh of so course that, was the first oh, time that must have been lovely Aww. yeah so that was really nice um so yeah I just feel like I've kind of like raced into October really mm. and now we're here and it's like oh my god Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's all been good stuff. Good, good. Lee. I always have that. September is always my favourite yeah. month of the mm. year, and then I feel like I haven't really. I never had like it. get out of it when yeah. I think mm. I will. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Um, I think because it's also just been so hot. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't felt like a autumn no. yet. No. Really. Yeah. like a little bit, but yeah. not really. Yeah. Um, I yeah, we had quite a quiet one, as I said, lots of poorliness in our household. Yes. Um, I did manage to sneak out for an amazing Sarah Chapman facial. Oh, no. Nice. I saw that on your Instagram yesterday. Oh, my God. I, I'm not one of those people. The skin does look lovely today. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm, it's, I don't think it does, but I think oh. it's very, very good. <laughs> um, I am not one of those people that can nap. Like, 
I can't, I would never just like sit on the sofa yeah. on a Sunday afternoon and close my eyes and have a nap. It kills mm. my husband that I won't fall asleep. It must be something <laughs> I think like, I'd love it if I could. I think yeah. the fact that you can let yourself go wherever you are and just have a little nap is such yeah, a Yeah, I'm, not, such a I'm not really a napper. But I'd love I'm not. to be. I've um, given it a go, but I always wake up feeling worse. Yeah. No, I just, I can't switch oh. my mind off. Yeah, yeah it's the same. I just mm. lie there thinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like normal. No. <laughs> no. But yeah. I did fall asleep oh in the wow facial, which has never happened i've never fallen asleep in a massage oh, wow. or anything like that so that was either testament to how good the facial was and how tired i am yeah <laughs> um, and the fact that you're a new mum. exactly yeah. exactly yeah a big combination of all those things Amazing. have you been there before yes yeah i mean it is such a good place for a facial they do like the um like facial gymnastics on your oh, face and nice. literally it's like your cheeks are going through a car wash oh <laughs> yeah that's quite a good way of describing and, it um, i absolutely love it Oh, um, yeah, really oh, kind of like so awakens nice. the muscles. Oh, yeah, because that whole like face gym thing as well. It, I know when it first launched, people were a bit like, sorry, what? But yeah. I, I it definitely it works. Like you've got yeah. muscle, you, you work out the muscles in your body yeah. um, to keep them kind of firm. And, yeah. And, mm. and, why would you not do that to your face? You so, have yeah. one of those faces where they so get true. their thumbs inside your yeah. mouth. Don't no, yes, I've had that. So, yeah, because I, I have not like a couple like of years to. back. Michaela Ball does that. Yeah, it's quite a weird sensation, I have to admit, when they start doing it. And actually, I can. This is no disrespect to Shani Darden. She's amazing. But when I sat up from the facial, she was like, "Look how young you are!" And she showed me this mirror, and it was like my face was almost like bruised. It was. I, I remember saying to Tor afterwards, it's, "It looked like I'd been in like a car crash or something. Oh, no. Like my face was so mangled and like red and oh, wow. like literally bruised." And then a couple of days later, I literally looked like a newborn baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was insane. Oh. Yeah. I, yeah. I love a facial so much. So do I, are you talking about it? That's what, only why I'm asking, because I don't really have them very often. Yeah. But every time someone talks about a great one, I'm like, actually. I, I would take a nice. facial over trying. a massage, pedicure, manicure, oh, really? everything. Really? Yeah, it's definitely the thing that I Ooh. enjoy the most. So what have you been up to, Helen? Mm. This weekend was really fun, actually. We, yesterday, on Sunday, went to go watch the NFL because they come over to London three times a year. So we went to go watch the Bills play uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that was really, really fun. It was at Tottenham Stadium. It was a sellout. And, yeah, it's one of those. So we're not Bills fans, we're Bengals fans. But I think because they only play very rarely, everyone who goes just wears their own team's top. So obviously there were loads of Bills and Jaguars fans. But it was just like, it's just a nice inclusive atmosphere where any team's allowed to sort of show up in their own team colours. And yes, it was really fun. And why did they come here? Because... Presumably, NFL is in season, right? We're yeah, all watching. Yeah, it is. It's um, their, but it's their proper games. So, so it is. Yeah, they it's just not just some come random. Over here to play them. Yeah, oh, that's, it's not that's like a impressive. random one-off. It's the still. Yeah, yeah. Part. Yes. Everything counts. Mm. It's not just because like I don't know about fans. anyone else, but I am more invested in NFL than I ever have been, thanks to the new Taylor Swift. Oh, Travis that. Kelsey. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, romance or whatever's happening. True. I am enjoying how that's really invigorated lots of people, and <laughs> yeah. I also like the. Um, the two brothers, because there's Travis, yeah. and then what's his brother? Jason, and yeah. he plays for the, e- the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. And he's like, yeah. there's a new documentary on Amazon Prime called Kelsey, and that's about the older brother, because he's like one of the most successful NFL players of yeah. all time. Like he's yeah, yeah. obviously Tom Brady's Tom Brady, but he's like, he's up there. Mm. And then uh, I could saw this hilarious meme actually on Instagram where it was like almost a TikTok actually between a husband and wife, American. And the, the wife is winding her husband up, yeah. basically, who's clearly a massive NFL and a massive Travis Kelsey fan. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he, she's saying, babe, you don't understand. No one knew who Travis Kelsey was yeah. before Taylor Swift. And he's like, no, Travis Kelsey is the most successful, whatever his position is, point guard or whatever, in the NFL. He's done this. He's done that. And she's like, babe, no one cared. Oh, no that's so funny. <laughs> it just gets yeah. like more and more wound up because she knows what she's doing. But yeah, it's funny that... Yeah. Um, it's these two very different people from different mm, worlds. Isn't definitely. It? But I really like the two brothers because they've had a podcast together mm. for ages anyway. And they've been like answering lots of Taylor Swift fans' questions where they're just asking just about basic rules of the game. And I just like that they've both been really uh, non patronizing and just mm. like taking it all very seriously in a fun way and like genuinely answering people's questions. So yeah, I feel like. Seems like a good guy. I yeah, of, I think he's. I'm not invested guy. in Taylor Swift's relationships at all, but this one, mm. I'm kind of like, actually, they're yeah. they're a good match. They're both yeah. very well off, very successful at what they do, and mm. both. I, f- like I get the feeling she's schedules. Like, I feel yeah. it could work. I feel like she's a bit of a poster woman as well for like modern 
dating, which 100%. is like every like you could so mm. easily have thought when she got together with Joe Alwyn and that relationship became so mm. long term compared to others, you could easily have thought like this is it, this is end game, like this is a standard thing. They're in their early thirties, like they'll get married. Yeah, and yeah. Be that. So the fact they've broken up, like obviously they'll have their own reasons for that, which I'm not interested in. But yeah. It's like, and now she's having to navigate dating in her mid thirties yeah, yeah. and start all over again after a six year relationship. I think probably quite a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm. But no, she mm. seems happy now. And yeah, like you say, if it's bringing more people to watch the game, because like quarterback came out this year that lots of people liked on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. Is about uh, the position in NFL. So I think, yeah. Um, has anyone been watching anything or reading anything recently? I mean, we've got to talk about the Beckham. We've yeah. got to talk yeah. about yeah. Beckham. Yeah. Beckham. Sure. Watched, I've watched all four parts. And I'm still to complete it, but let's let's yeah. go in, let's <laughs> chat. What's I, everyone's initial thoughts? I'm, I really enjoyed it. I particularly enjoyed the first two, actually, just like really delving into his football career. Yeah. Obviously, mm-hmm. like how he was like proper poster boy. Um, and then after the kick, he properly dropped down and... The bullying, the hatred that he—I don't think I quite realized how bad. I agree. I think we were that slightly was. too young. Weren't yeah. We? It was yeah. Like, I would never say that Beckham was before my time, but that Argentina incident—I remember it. Yeah. But I do not remember. We wouldn't have been reading the all the papers yeah. or no, every, no. you know, watching the news and seeing that. I probably side remember of my parents being like, "Oh, he was." You know, he didn't behave well or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. I wasn't, yeah, we weren't yeah. reading papers or anything. But like disgusting. Age. It went yeah. on for years and years. The yeah. thing that really came home to me in the documentary was like how, and you know this, it's not new, but how much they lived through that crazy tabloid culture in yeah. Britain. Mm. I think it's really interesting that the timing of Princess Diana's death is also mm. kind of really contemporary to that because arguably there was a shift in media attitudes i'm not saying the media is like perfect today it's absolutely not but the way the tabloids behaved then was just because there was no social media to dilute yeah. it maybe yeah um or people to offer their own counterbalance exactly mm. yeah people didn't what they have their own voices share. yeah to clap back it it you know the sun or whoever they just ruled mm. didn't yeah. they mm. did you guys know i'm for i'm sure you probably do know this but the guy that directed it and the voice oh yeah i know what you're gonna say yeah Yeah. (laughs) stevens yeah from succession yeah Yeah. i had no idea chloe told me last week and then as soon as she said it i was like yes that is. he dated sarah jessica parker and loads of other babes in the 90s he was like a proper ladies man yes he he is yeah he's like an iconic character yes But he was big in the 90s. And then I think since then, he's been doing a lot more sort of filmmaking and stuff. And then obviously Succession as well. I have to say, though, I thought he was a right kiss ass in this. I was like... Well, I haven't got to the end, but I know the Mm. Qatar thing hasn't been touched upon, which is surely slightly uh, controversial, seeing as that is the biggest controversy that Beckham has faced recently. I watched all four and I was like, oh, I just love the Beckhams. Like, Mm. they're so iconic. They're national treasures. They've come across so well in this, blah, blah, blah. And then I read an online review that basically the title of it was What a Load of Golden Balls. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I'm going to read this because this is obviously not what I thought. So, you know, diverse opinions. And I read it and actually they made some very good points that they avoided most of the controversy yeah. that has ever if you, played them. Pres- presumably the exec produced it, did they? Like they had a they say. They must have had a massive yeah. say in it. I think in this review, it was obviously pointing to several things, like the Qatar issue, like the fact that he's alleged not to have just had the one affair. He's alleged to have mm. had more. Um, you know, the fact that they've been accused of running a brand, not having a marriage mm. and all of this stuff. Like the day it came out, the papers kind of ran with a lot of the like, Beckham's address, Rebecca Luce controversy. Mm. I mean, I that was it, addressed ages ago. Like I'd yeah. forgotten about it. Mm. But when I watched the actual episode that talks a lot about their unhappiness in Madrid, mm. she doesn't she's actually, actually get a mention. Yeah. No. They talk around this, this yeah, idea. I think it's done quite cleverly because mm. they kind of like, n- it's nothing said specifically, but she says like, yeah. you know, the world was against us and we were against each other yeah and it was a really hard mm. time enjoy the bit where um victoria was talking about her working class roots and yeah, David, i mean at least he calls her on it the yeah. door, like what car did your dad yeah. have i did I think that they, 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 they got, as well i was like oh good for you they've like, got good yeah good banter yeah I think, between well this them. is yeah. I mean, it sounds like i'm being a real debbie downer about it by the end of it and obviously you guys haven't got to the end so i don't want to mm. spoil anything but like by the end of it, I did feel like, I think they've just settled. 
mm. into their life. Like yeah. they have everything they're ever going to want to need financially mm -hmm. and materially speaking. Their children are seemingly happy and healthy. And sort of grown up almost. Growing yeah. and everyone's happy, you know. And I just think, oh, because that's the other stuff. Like they don't address the Nicola Peltz issues that have supposedly been a thing. But it's, oh, it, yeah, it is, true. I felt like the docu was about David Beckham, 100%. not the Beckhams. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was going to be about them as a family, and it's not. It's yeah. very much about David and his mm. kind of it's, rise. It's a really good point, actually, because yeah. especially the second episode around Argentina, mm. I was watching it and I was like, this is a lot of football. Like, yeah. if people aren't interested in the football, I'm going to say you might struggle through. Oh, cool, because yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I did think it was going to be about. Like, you know, everyone's loving those sort of sports documentaries on yeah. Netflix, so it's kind oh, of a bit yeah. of that, but then with some family Yeah, and, yeah, and I also didn't realise that his dad was, like, such so a intense. huge... Yeah. Yeah, and, and, like, really, you know you know a huge part into why he's as successful mm -hmm. as he is and yeah. continuing pushing and pushing and yeah, pushing yeah. and you know never said how kind of good he was and I think he said says one of the reasons is that well he's got nothing to work towards if you tell them how good they are mm. so you can tell he's a bit of a pushy parent mm. um but yeah I thought it was really good and I thought he came across really he well, comes actually. across really well um, but again you know he doesn't address any of the reasons that he's not been made Sir, De Sir David Beckham yet yeah. um, all of that tax controversy a yeah. few years yeah. ago um, so there are definite holes yeah. I would say it's a glossy yeah. um, branding exercise and I do feel like she is very savvy and she's very she's obviously a very clever woman in mm. her own, own right I would never take that away from her but she has made her compromises and together they are stronger than they are mm. apart, especially for her. So oh, I they're think they're such a such a brand. Yeah. Also, they show their wedding pictures. I was gonna say, yeah. I, oh my goodness. <laughs> no, I had iconic. I, I still have it seared in my I brain. Bought the book. Oh, they my produced God. a book in the wedding book. of the wedding. And we oh bought it. We Has that ever been more wow. of a transformation? Like, yeah, it's, they've yeah. had a glow up. So the way they've the done it is incredible particularly her in the yeah. fashion world oh now yeah when you look at those uh, that's what i liked about the documentary like the, uh, the nostalgia I was yeah, yeah, yeah. late 90s early noughties Some the, of the airport outfits photos oh my god wild. and they own it as well like they yeah. talk about um mm. when like he calls his dad whatever and he's like you're looking the newspaper you're, you're gonna see something he's like yeah i'm, I'm wearing a sarong <laughs> <laughs> and then his dad's like it looks good on you. Yeah. <laughs> it looks good on you. Um, they own it and they, I don't know, they don't make any excuses for it. And they're just like, do you know what? We just had fun. Yeah. And I think That's that good. it's like total credit to them. I think that also they can kind of maintain that lead within their own industries mm. for mm. such a long time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They're the king and uh, queen of reinvention. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, Victoria Beckham is such a well respected fashion designer yeah. in her mm -hmm. in her own mm. right now i really really enjoyed it okay. i did too and i would recommend people watch yeah, it yeah. I, I also would... think i didn't think he was fit and now i think he's really yeah fit. there we go <laughs> revisionist <laughs> think David fit? i've just never it's never done it for me, for me. Really? And it's then, his personality which well I'm sure. yeah and his voice his voice is weird but he they? is fit in it i had yeah, lots of posters it. of him yeah. on my wall growing it's up so good. yeah <laughs> yeah that world cup when he had a shaved head anything else anyone else has been watching has anyone um, seen the supermodels? Yeah. No, oh, I've watched the first one. Um, yeah. And really, really enjoyed it. Mm. It's just like, so every frame is so beautifully shot as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So who, which supermodels does it follow? It's Linda Evangelista, um, Sydney Crawford, Naomi Campbell, and... Christy Turlington? Turlington, yeah. Is that her name? Mm -hmm. Very good. It's like the mega four yeah. from, I yeah. guess, the 80s. 80s. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of like charts their rise from like teenagers all in like completely different walks of life. Yeah. And then them like coming together as like these four incredible models, also in their own right, but then strong together as well. Mm -hmm. um, their career, mm -hmm. it touches on their personal life as well. Mm -hmm. gets quite deep. It's really interesting, um, particularly if you don't know, like if you want to look back at what that era was like mm. in the 80s, where it's like the magazines were like, king mm -hmm. and every single shot in of them in all the magazines was so like you know it was like a piece of art in itself mm -hmm. yeah those the that that kind of style of photographer mm -hmm. as well they are like you know cult artists yeah. as well yeah. is that so different to mm -hmm. now as well mm -hmm. um so yeah i really enjoyed it again with the beckhams it doesn't really touch on like a lot of the controversies mm -hmm. like naomi campbell for example mm -hmm. but some of the things that she's done 
Um, but it is really interesting to look back at that time in history. And, and then now and they're, they're all still friends and, you know, lots of the points raised were interesting in that um, Naomi faced a lot of racism. I mean, she, I guess she still does today mm-hmm. to a certain extent, but back then, obviously, a lot more so. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Christy that was saying, like, oh, I wouldn't go to certain shows unless Naomi would come with me. So it's, like, how their friendship has evolved yeah, and, like, good. them being, it's like... real sisterhood. Yeah. Real sisterhood, real, like, allies. Um, and that's, I guess, they came up together. Yeah. yeah. Also, I found it so interesting that you kind of assume it was, like, an overnight thing. Like, they were just that beautiful that they were, like, already supermodels. But, yeah. like, mm-hmm. it was such an evolution as mm. well. And, you know, you can't be looking at, like, their shoots from, like, their first shoots and how different they look. And, like, yeah, it's amazing. We actually saw some early Naomi Campbell stuff. Uh, Sherry and I went to go see The Missing Thread, which is a Somerset house at the Mm -hmm. moment that focuses on lots of different types of black creators. But Mm -hmm. there was an amazing fashion uh, section, which was excellent. But we really loved there were some really early photos. I think, was she 15? 15 or 14, Um, yeah, yeah, teenager. uh, Mm. Like, really early photos of Naomi Campbell. They were absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Anything else anyone else has been up to? Away from the sofa. yesterday, quite out there, so people are going to have to bear with me, I had a psychic reading done. Fun. Wow. Yeah. Is this your first one? Mm-hmm. Have you had one? I've had loads. Oh, have well, you? I say loads. I've had two or three. Okay. Um, Where did you get it done? So I went to this place called the Wellness Foundry, which Tor and I talked about probably two years ago. Because mm. um, I think they had done like a pop-up at Selfridges and she'd been invited down and really liked it. And then I this was not a press thing at all. I paid for it and it was, it's not cheap, but it's not like ridiculous. Um, and I just, I literally picked the first person who had like sort of, short-term availability and what's so weird is I was telling Tor about it this morning and she was like I had Susanna oh She's really amazing. wow mm. um so we just happened to end up with the same reader and I was really skeptical because they do a lot of it over zoom mm. and you can have in person but it's a lot more expensive and again the availability is not as great so I kind of had some burning questions so I was like I'm gonna just sign up for zoom and see and I would say that I am open to this sort of stuff, but I do have a cynical side. So I was not going into it as like a complete, like, you know, woo woo me up. Yeah, but yeah. Equally, I, would, I think you do have to be open minded. if Yeah, you yeah I think yeah, surely you can't go in just being like, no. well, this isn't going to work. Yeah. I mean, why would you? Yeah. And like I say, I paid for it myself. Mm. So clearly there was a desire to do it. Um, and I just have to say it was scarily accurate. Really? really? Yeah, to the point where I said to Tor, I was really conscious because I did have this cynical side. Mm-hmm. I was very conscious of not telling her anything. Yeah. She did know my oh. full... Yeah, she knew, she knew your full name. Full name. Mm-hmm. And obviously that can be Googled to yeah, an extent. Yeah. My Instagram is, pri- is actually mm-hmm. private, so she couldn't have seen anything more on there except my job title. <laughs> She's watched she, every yeah. podcast. Yeah, she could go through the podcast. Hi. However, <laughs> I only booked it the day before, so how okay. much time yeah, she'd yeah. have yeah. to do that is probably quite yeah, limited. Yeah. Um, and... So, and that was literally, I gave her nothing. We just came on the call and she basically explained how it would work. It would work in two parts. She would do like, because the other thing about psychic readings that the Wellness Foundry particularly wants you to know is it's absolutely not about predictions. It's Mm. not about, um, you know, she's going to sort of lie there and say, I see you getting married in this or having this success at work. Like, no, it's, Mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's about you basically come face to face with her and she just reads your energy like, almost straight off the bat like Mm. it's just like firing on all cylinders and she just tells you what's coming in and then you can sort of take that or leave it but then how so she's telling you like how you're feeling what's going on in your life right now yeah but then what's your takeaway from that because you obviously know so then the second half of the reading you are allowed to ask her questions so you kind of get two experiences out and how far Mm. ahead is that is that like so i think it really depends I think when you say how far ahead, like are they are they like big life questions? They were for me, okay. But obviously, you can ask what everyone. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't put any limitations okay. on you, so you could literally say, "I have this thing coming up in two weeks. I'm really nervous yeah. about it, and I'd love to know what the spirit guides are basically telling you." Yeah. Or you could like mine were much more philosophical, okay. um, and about you know general stuff that's yeah. sort of going on in my personal life which I won't bore everyone with but yeah they were like big life questions okay. I suppose so the first half of the reading was scarily accurate she was like basically you've um you've just been through a transitional period at work where like everything's been sort of assessed and I was like well yeah it's appraisal season and then she was saying 
per, in my personal life, she was like, I see loads of doors. Like you're trying to force all these doors open and they just keep being like slammed in your face. I was like, fuck, yes, that is exactly like oh, how really? I would describe it. Mm. And there's no, how could she know to say that? I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. that's a general thing that you could say is open to interpretation yeah, yeah. like horoscopes. But it just, it felt like she hit the nail on the head yeah. really quickly. Um, and and was then, this, sorry, was this over the phone? Zoom. Oh, Zoom. So I could oh, see her okay. and she could see me. Oh, interesting. But, yeah, because I suppose you have to pick up on your energy somehow. Yeah, like, and that? yeah, and I was like, how are they going to pick up on energy over Zoom? But <laughs> If your Wi-Fi connection's not yeah, working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They do say to you, actually, they're like, we need a good connection. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually, the first half was definitely interesting because I felt like she understood my mental state mm -hmm. right off the bat. And then the second half, when I had some really specific questions that's where it became more predictive. Mm. It's not about predictions, but mm -hmm. if you want to say there was a predictive element to it, that's where it happened. And she's just she's just told me some stuff that I just feel like, because I was always very frightened to get a psychic reading in the sense that I don't want someone to tell me I'm going to die next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they don't take it. <laughs> no, but they don't. It's not like that at all. Um, she told me that 36 is going to be like the most important year of my life. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm 34 now for reference. Mm -hmm. um, she also told me that she sees me going like down this two year path essentially. And that is at 36, there's going to be like a major fork in the road. And she was like, I basically see relocation, like oh, massive wow. relocation, huge, long way away from home. And she's like, I also see like a green and a red door. She's like, I've no idea what that means. It could be the choice between two people. It could be the cho choice between right and wrong, or it could be literally something to do with a green and a red door oh my god mm. i know so. every time you walk past a green and red wow. door you're like i know, I know. <laughs> which one well she also said i thought this is a really interesting point she said the re the point of these readings is not to tell you like you're gonna have two children by the time yeah you're blah 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 it's to tell you that um well it's to give you comfort and guidance and then ultimately ultimately make you more aware so that you do go out into the world with this like heightened awareness mm. And you're open to seeing signs and then interpreting them and taking your own action. Mm. Yeah. It's not about, mm. she's going to tell me there's this red and green door and you should go through the green Yeah, exactly. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought it was yeah. about interpretation and, and and how, yeah, they'll they'll kind of say something and then it sparks something in your mm -hmm. mind or in your life that you then become more aware she of. She also knew pretty much everything. I would say I've had like maybe three major relationships in my life. One very long term, the other kind of medium, the other mm -hmm. very short. She knew everything really? about all of them. There's no, there is no way that she could know some of that stuff. Because my first relationship, I was like 20 years old yeah. when I got into that. Fascinating. Wow. Um, but I would just, I would really recommend her as a reader. Mm. And I would say to anyone who's considering it to tour put together a list yeah, of yeah. spiritual leaders. And you can find that on the website, on the Sherlock site. But sort of take your own advice and, and see what you feel is right for you. But I would really recommend it and now I want to know all about yeah I was going to say so you <laughs> oh say gosh. that you've done a few yeah. so they with the same people they were the same person yeah and do um, you do it when it, you feel like I, I, haven't say, done, no, I haven't done it in, I haven't done it in years I but did you book them when you felt you yeah I think I felt like a little sore. bit at a crossroads yeah. mm -hmm. and just a little bit lost, lost. I guess she and said I that to me to... and I didn't think she was like oh are you are you here because you're feeling lost so I think it must be a very common yeah motivation. yeah I just feel like it kind of helps you work out mm -hmm. what you Definitely. want to happen That's, because they'll yeah. say things that you can interpret in a certain way and then mm. you're like okay yeah in my head that's making sense because that's why I want and that's what I need to get that so it's almost like you join the dots and they just kind of say key words yeah. and she I definitely didn't predict my future um have you written it all down I recorded the whole session yeah, oh, yeah. Um, she encouraged yeah. me to yeah my mum's got a recording of one she did a, probably 20 mm. years ago now and a lot of that how much is, oh yeah the same that it, yeah. that it, it made it basically all made sense yeah in the end. Yeah. yeah yeah I would also say that there were things that I thought made sense about something closer to the time and then later down the line I realized oh no actually it's more that? like this thing mm. now well she said about mm. my relocation she was like I see Australia I've been to Australia once and I hated it. <laughs> so I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's really going to be true. But she, but I was telling Tor about that this morning and I mentioned the Australia thing. She was like, yeah, but she could be seeing just like this open, expanse yeah. of land. Mm. That doesn't have to be Australia. It could be something else. anywhere. Yeah. Sherry, would you ever, or have you ever... See, I'm listening to this. I'm like, I like the idea of it, but I just, I cannot get on board. 
I don't know if that sounds really like no, negative no, and skeptical. No, not but at all. I totally, I was you like yeah. two yeah, years ago. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I like the idea, but for then me to be actually sat down, I'd be constantly thinking, and well, that could be anything. This is too yeah, open-ended. Yeah. Like I'd want to go in there with like specifics. And also the, the spirits. I mean, I think, I think it's because I'm not like a spiritual person. I'm not mm. like a religious person. So for me, it's very hard to be thinking about <laughs> these the spirits or like there's something mm-hmm. else out there that is, yeah. you know, calling yeah. into your life. I don't know. But then maybe I should have it for that reason. I, think, so. my mind. I, I think, think you need to be yeah. open-minded yeah. to it. Yeah. I also think, I think the second one I had, I approached a little bit more like a kind of a therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it was just someone to bounce off a little yeah. bit and talk. And as I said, How like, spaced out were yours? Because she said to me, don't come back for like at least three months. Oh, oh really? mine is like three years. Two yeah, years. Oh, okay. a, yeah, long, yeah. a long time. And she actually, basically said the energy isn't going to change. Yeah. So yeah, like basically, there's no point. Which um, I also thought was really interesting because you would think from like a business point of view, yeah, right, they have yeah. this vested interest in yeah. getting people yeah. to shell out all yeah, the yeah. time. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like my one of my mum's old friends used to go and see this psychic every week, and I yeah. used to be like, that psychic yeah, is raking it yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> but this one, she had absolutely no intention of me spending yeah. any more money if I didn't want to. Mm. In my first one, she said something like very key and then it didn't happen. And then she said something very different in the second one. So, um, yeah. so you read with the same woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had the same woman twice. And there was one thing that was very different on both oh, occasions. Interesting. Hmm. This show's crazy. I'd be like, crazy. no. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's all about your interpretation. And yeah. you're yeah. getting yeah. like a really positive thing I from think, that. Yeah. And that's only a good thing. Yeah. It's the same yeah. as like spending money on like a massage or. I've had Reiki before, and that's I all about energy. Reiki. And I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it. It was group Reiki. And even my boyfriend came along as well. Because <laughs> it was like at a hotel, and he was really like, what are we doing? I didn't know how it would work with it being like a group thing. Yeah. And she. She was doing it all around people's heads, so um, she wasn't really touching you very much. Because I think some people do sort of touch you quite a lot, and some people just sort of get it. But I think there was probably like twelve of us in the room. It was at Birch, the original yeah. one that opened, because they do quite a lot of nice sort of well-being experiences mm. there. But. At first, I was, like, not offended. I don't know what the word is, but she wasn't really coming over to me very much. And I kind of wanted to, like, Mm. have some interaction. But on the other side of the room, I could hear someone crying. And she was really sort of, like, working with them on something. I don't know what. But then at one stage, she finally sort of came over. Because she'd come around a bit with, like, lots of, like, nice clanging, noisy things Mm. and stuff and scents and various things. And then she eventually came over to me at the end. And I can't remember, well, I can remember what she said, but I'm not going to say on this. But she just said something like really positive and then like smashed me in the chest with her, um, like right there. And I remember being like, fucking hell. But I did feel it was a really amazing, like the way she did it. She Mm. sort of like charged it somehow. And it did really sort of like jolt me and made me feel really like energized and like picking stuff up. So yeah, and I think... um, Yeah, my boyfriend actually, because I thought he was just going to be there like, what is all this? But actually he felt quite, not moved, but he definitely felt felt like... I always say I'm a big fan of Western medicine and a big fan of Eastern spirituality and I don't know that the two things have to be mutually exclusive. Mm. Oh, well, thanks for sharing, everyone. Loved hearing about that. Um, We've got some questions from our lovely readers and people on Instagram. This is probably quite obvious. Well, it is for me, but what's your favourite season for fashion and why? Why no, Liz? Mm. Obviously (laughs) now. Now, but we're back, as in it's finally starting to get cold. Do you feel like you know, you're wearing something nice? And yeah, I mean, it was going to be really warm today, yeah. but I was like, do you know what? I just want to wear my cozy. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, I'm like, brown. Yeah, I'm wearing brown. It's yeah, autumn time. All the layers, all the textures, all the knits just wrap me up. Love it. Is there anything in particular you've got your eye on at the moment? Um, ooh, I, I feel like I really need to work on my footwear. Mm. Um, there is, I went into COS recently and I don't think I've been into a store recently and loved so many pieces all at once. Mm. That collection COS is, is amazing at the moment. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I think if you are after just kind of almost like just kickstart your, your autumn mm-hmm. wardrobe from the like base up, yeah. it's perfect. Um, really good, like rich tones. There's obviously lots of browns around. You're very on trend right now, Heather. Didn't even. <laughs> um, I just liked the collar. <laughs> no, but shoes. I feel like I really need yeah. to work on mm. my shoes. Shoes are tricky at this time of year because, like, is it going to rain? Is it not? Like, do you want to wear a boot yet? Do you wanna, yeah. You want to look smart for work. I actually heard Charlotte 
it must have been in the spring because the, the period I always find the most difficult is transitional. Which yeah, is yeah. What yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said to Georgina, I think, that she found a pair of white or cream boots to be what actually one of the most useful pieces in her wardrobe. And I never forgot it. And then literally last week I picked these up and actually I have found them so useful. I really do think that, what do you think? They, I mean, they go with everything. Mm. Yeah. Sherry, have you got any autumn wintery things on your wish list? I bought a quilted jacket from Coz, which is, you know when you're searching for the perfect coat I put yeah. it on and I was like yes yeah. this is exactly I love what I you want. also yes. have to act so fast with coats yeah exactly. and, and buy even if it's really hard buy. yeah because yeah. they'll be gone but I do want to get some new boots and I'm not sure what style to go for I love a mm. chunky mm -hmm. but I, for me because I wear them to death they mm. don't last as long mm -hmm. so I want like a really good investment boot that's going to last a few yeah. years I also feel like because trouser lengths are much longer this season mm. that a boot is kind of it's not really getting the attention that it used to have oh, that's yeah, true that's well, when true. we were all wearing well, them because yeah, you just don't really see them so much <laughs> so I think the kind of the toe shape and the heel is mm -hmm. is just as important mm -hmm. if not more than kind of the overall aesthetic of it because you don't really see these things yeah. it's so true I was that's walking so to work true. this morning and these obviously have a pointed toe on I haven't worn a pointed toe boot mm. in the longest time because the ones I had last year were basically a slightly cheaper alternative to the row oh, yeah, of course. zip mm. ups yeah um, and I was walking to work and I was like, I feel so like elegant. Yeah. 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 Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it felt really like modern, I guess. Mm. Yeah, that's the word. Nice. Well, I've been getting lots of use out of my, I bought, it's a men's one, but I bought a Marnie Carhartt coat in the Mr. The Porter minute sale. Heather oh, wore it into the office, so I was like, cool. where is that coat from? Yeah, <laughs> I it got it. it. Men's small and it was 60% off. And I was oh, really pleased to have it. Such a resurgence. So good, mm. so yeah. good. But again, yeah, bought it. I think it was in the middle of summer in the sale. Yeah. And you know when you buy something, you're like, oh, I can't wear yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. Exactly yeah. Now I'm it. like, yes, it's also got a million pockets in, which is really useful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then finally, then, a final question, sort of similar theme. How do you stay motivated heading into autumn, winter with the darker mornings and evenings? It can make it difficult. Ooh. Do they um, mean exercise -wise? I think in general, in general, I've got an answer because I've got a list mm, here okay. of all the TV that's about to come out. <laughs> oh my it's gosh. just come out. Embrace yeah. cosy season. Yeah. Big Brother, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone here is planning on watching. Sherry and I my were, yeah. and then yeah. didn't realise today that somebody we know is on it. So now <laughs> we're kind of in. I know, I know. Well, um, like a, a, a industry, an yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, a food critic oh. who uh, we know, follow, and have mm. met is on okay. it, which I had no idea he was going to yeah. be on it. So uh, we've got to watch it. We've got to watch it now. Mm. I think. Celeb SAS is on. Have you been watching yeah. that? Yeah, oh, I love that. So Same. Much. I mean, I'm in my pure, like, this is my favourite time of year. Grand Designs, Bake Off, Only Connect, yes. Drag Race UK. Strictly. Well, yeah, Strictly. I don't watch Strictly, <gasps> but Strictly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's on. Uh, we've also got Married at First Sight. You're watching ding, that, ding. Sherry. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, Boiling Point. I haven't started watching that yet. Oh, so no, that's going to be so series, good. Yeah. BBC mm. series that mm. follows on from the film that had Stephen okay. Graham in. Um, and then, yeah, Time Series 2 is coming <gasps> out. It's set in a women's prison this oh time. Oh, my God. That's going to be so good. Uh, that yeah. still sits with me. I remember as, you really I think one of the best that. bits of telly I have ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't. When When's that out? Um, we don't know yet. But TBC. I think mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah, there's lot, lots of really good TV to come. There's the Wagatha Christie trial, Colleen Rooney's yeah. thing mm -hmm. coming lessons out very in soon. Lessons in chemistry is Yeah, Lessons in chemistry is coming out this yeah. week. I think it's this Friday? week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I so started much. reading that on holiday in June and it is so hard to read a book when you've got a baby <laughs> I'm sure oh my god and I'm enjoying it so much yeah, and I've tr really I've picked like it up it. and put it down and it's really I almost just need to go and like lock myself or just oh, listen to our, our book podcast yes, and then you yeah. can just hear it and not listen oh no but yeah, I'm really read want it. to you know I just I go I mean I'm enjoying getting lost yeah. in it but I just mm, then I, hear, I have a little it remind, is very reasonable. someone reminds me might finish in the Christmas holidays yeah, probably. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, so anyway that's my advice is just like hunker down with all the good TV that yeah make the most yeah. of it yeah anyone else I do find mm. early dark mornings hard mm. and I don't even have a long commute so you guys are all getting up earlier yeah, than yeah. me too it's but just, uh, even this week or this Monday is kind of hard I've really noticed it in the past week the real jump yeah. in time um obviously the clocks haven't quite gone back yet no. but um but yeah, it's already starting to mm. shift. But mm. I don't know. Maybe we need a community thread for that because I don't. Yeah. I don't cope well with dark mornings. I, mm, I um, don't mind them. used to do mm. this, but now I have like a different alarm clock. Mm. Yes. Um, <laughs> where uh, 
I used to get so frustrated. Like the radio was always set mm, as my mm. alarm. And depending on like the first song that I would hear on the radio would really like set my mood for the day. If mm-hmm. it was something I really enjoyed, yeah. I, it would like wake up in a much lighter mood. If it was too bangy bangy, it was just like <laughs> not the right vibe. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to decide this. So I set the alarm to a playlist that I have or an album that I love. And it just like made me wake up in yeah, such, that's a really that's such good, a good idea. idea. Yeah. I don't even know how to do that. You have to show me how. Um, yeah, you can just set it up and it's on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a really much more of a, like a gentle way to yeah, wake up that's and nice. just kind of really like set the mood. Ooh, yeah, so, it's a great idea. Yeah. But you have to keep rotating it so you yeah, don't then rotating. associate that song with waking up. No, that's exactly. So but yeah, true, just yeah. put put yeah. the album on shuffle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a nice great idea. Really good one. Sherry, any words of wisdom? Words of wisdom, I think I actually get seasonal affective disorder mm. reverse, which is actually a thing. So in the summer, I, I just dread it. Well, you hate the heat, don't I you? I hate the heat, but yeah. I just, I don't know what it is. I know it's not normal because everyone in the UK loves the summer, yeah. <laughs> but me. So when it gets to this time of the year, I'm like, yes, yeah. this is what I was made for. So I actually really look forward to it. So for me getting up and it's dark, I'm like, oh, yes. And that sounds really strange, but I think, I don't know what it is. There's probably something in it, but I just really look forward to the coldness. And Yeah, I'm looking forward to that arriving. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, leaving work when it's dark, that is a bit depressing. Mm. Well, see, I don't mind that because I sort of feel like I'm going home to hunker down. That's true. Mm. Whereas I'm having to like force myself out of the house. It's yeah. when you leave in the dark and arrive in the dark. That's yeah. when that it's a bit like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is very true. But then maybe that's just a question of like at lunchtime, making sure you get out and yeah, yeah. get some daylight and some vitamin D or whatever. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's true. yeah, vitamin D spray have an mm. sad light yeah have you got help. one i actually don't but i yeah. should mm. Mm. i should yeah. does make a difference we'll put it on in the summer <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> or if anyone wants to send me one of those like loomy lights that like gradually oh, yeah. illuminates the room yes. so that you wake up naturally oh. yeah that's a good yeah. shout yeah. Mm-hmm. i think that would wind me up i like a short and sharp do you awake. Yeah. yeah are you one of those people that the <laughs> alarm go. goes off and you get out I used to be <laughs> i just need a few yeah, times yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm a big snoozer yeah mm well energy (laughs) brilliant Uh, thanks so much everyone and thank you for watching and listening if you've got any questions please do email us at podcast at shillux we love hearing from you and we'll see you next time thank you goodbye